$30 bottle of blended scotch really go toe to toe with Diageo's $300 bottle of ultra premium whiskey? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt and today we're doing a head to head review and comparison of two blended scotch whiskeys. One of these is probably the most popular blended scotch whiskey on the market and one of the most well known. And that would be the Johnny Walker Blue Label. This is Diageo's ultra premium blended scotch whiskey. This is the top of the line for their core range. That's what I have on the right here. On the left, I have a relatively unknown blended scotch whiskey from an independent bottler named Delphi, uh, which is responsible for uh, the Arden American Distillery, if you've heard about them. And this is the Adelphi Private Stock Blended Scotch. Now, what's really uh, notable about these two is between these two whiskeys, there is actually more than a 10 times price difference, which makes this comparison really fun. So let's get to the details about these bottles and then to the comparison. So we're gonna start off talking about Johnny Walker Blue Label just because it is so well known. Uh, now this is Diageo's ultra premium blended whiskey. It's an aspirational whiskey. This is the whiskey that people give their bosses as a gift. It's given as a wedding gift. It is something to mark pivotal moments in people's lives, like the birth of a child. Um, it's, thing, it's a whiskey that a lot of people have a lot of memories attached to for those reasons, but it was made for those big moments in life. It has a price tag to match. But a bit of information about it, it's a blended scotch whiskey, which means uh, it's made of uh, grain whiskey and of malt. Uh, it's 40% ABV, uh, it's colored, and it's chill filtered. Uh, and it was first released in 1992. Uh, now, this is Johnny Walker's most prestigious whiskey in their core range, their core lineup. And again, it's probably the most famous of the super premium blended whiskeys. It's made up of the finest uh, old aged malt and grain whiskeys in the Diageo warehouses. Um, they use the line, only one of every 10,000 casks uh, has the character required to, and blah, 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 to be part of this blend. So they're saying, okay, very little of our stocks are up to snuff to be able to go into this blend. That is how select, how choice it is. So of the choicest stocks, sure. It's comprised of malt and grain whiskeys of at least 28 years of age and up. So that's a big, that's a big age. Um, and there's 13 different malts and grain distilleries in it and included in those are uh, malt distilleries like Linkwood and Kalila. So some, some very, um, very top notch malt distilleries in the Diageo lineup. Now prices vary all over the map, but where I'm located in British Columbia, Canada right now, uh, we have a government system and they usually have the lowest prices. And at our government store right now, this whiskey retails for $340 Canadian. That is a lot of money. That is not what I remember Johnny Walker Blue costing. I remember it costing a lot less. However, we also have a 15% tax on top of that that we have to pay. So if I went to, to buy this whiskey from a store in British Columbia, it's gonna run me at minimum $391 Canadian. I saw it at a private store down the street from the government store for after tax $453 Canadian. This is not inexpensive. Again, 28 year old whiskeys. Okay, let's see if it's up to the challenge. Let's talk about the Challenger, the $30 bottle that's going up against this whiskey. Now the Challenger 2 Johnny Walker Blue Label in this head to head comparison and review is as I mentioned earlier, the Adelphi Private Stock Blended Scotch Whiskey. Now this whiskey is 40% ABV. Uh, it's likely colored and chill filtered, but I, I don't see it mentioned on the label. It's possible that it's not. Oftentimes the Adelphi bottlings aren't. Um, so we'll see. But for now, I'm just gonna assume that's the same stats as Johnny Walker Blue Label in that regard. Um, now this is made up of grain whiskey and malt whiskey, same as Johnny Walker Blue Label. And this is said to have a high proportion of malt whiskey in its uh, composition and includes whiskeys from Isla and Cameltown and I believe uh, from Speyside as well. Now I've even heard that the rumor has it that the Isla whiskey included in this is Lafroig. Can't confirm that, 
but it's an interesting rumor nonetheless. Um, also, there's no word on what they mean by a high proportion of this whiskey is malt. Um, that What's well, a high proportion? Is a high proportion over 50%? Is a high proportion over 30%? I'm not sure. But we'll take it for what it, what it is, which is uh, the little bit of information they give us. Now, this blend is kept in a Solera vat. Um, like, a, basically, it's a giant vat. Almost looks like a, a large washback, um, which it has the whiskey filled into it. When they draw whiskey out for bottling, they top the Solera system back up with uh, the same composition or a similar composition of whiskeys that they originally put into it. And what's interesting about this is something that's usually used in the in the sherry business uh, for fortified wines. Um, it one it helps keep the um, batches and the recipe kind of consistent uh, because you have them all marrying and blending together. So there's going to be similar DNA from batch to batch, but it also means that as time goes on, it gets older and older and older, at least a small proportion of it does because inevitably, even in the, mo the latest batch of this, because it's a, a Solera system, it will still have some whiskey from the original batch that's still you know, mixing up and marrying with the other. Uh, whiskey that was subsequently added. So it's really cool. Solera system, um, really neat way to do a blended scotch. This whiskey uh, was purchased for $28.99 Canadian. After taxes, that's like $33 Canadian. This is somewhere between 12 to 14 times less expensive than the Johnny Walker Blue Label. It's got a tall task ahead of it, but I want to thank Andrew for lending me this bottle so I could go ahead and do this comparison. I've had it for a few weeks now. So sorry, Andrew. This bottle's coming back to you eventually. Okay, so we're going to start off here with this $30 versus $300 uh, blend comparison uh, with the Adelphi. Um, as the challenger, I think I, I owe it to Johnny Walker Blue to be able to follow this up. And um, yeah, this might be younger. It, it certainly is younger than the blue, so this should go first in the lineup. Hmm. Honey, grass, a touch of oak. And by oak, I mean like the oak spice, like just at the, the very end of the nose uh, there. And very prominent, there is, um, there is peat, and it feels like medicinal peat. Um, it's not prominent? but it's definitely noticeable and recognizable. And it doesn't profile like a, um, a Kalila peat or uh, uh, a you know, Lagavulin peat. This profile is more like that Lafrug peat. Maybe I'm just in my head because it's been mentioned, but my nose would agree with, with that, that rumor that the, the, the Isla malt may be Lafrug. That wisp of pea behind that, there's a touch of sour um, on the nose. Maybe some like uh, apple cider vinegar sort of thing. It's a little acidic in that way. But there's also like a little solventy note too. Maybe that's uh, some of the grain there. You know, certainly you can tell there's grain in there, but the malt content is evident on the nose. Seems well integrated. I get. Um, white chocolate and yeah, green apples. The nose is a little bit um, dark and brooding and by that I mean like there just seems to be something um, almost a little dank, uh, almost a little musty on the nose. But it's also, it's also been dulled. Um, it's a very round nose. It's like it's been blunted by something. Maybe it's been blunted by them watering it down to 40%. There's some sherry influence on the nose, uh, almost like a, a, a slight light raisin or chocolate. Maybe the slightest touch of sulfur, like struck match sulfur, not like uh, rotten egg sulfur. Yeah, small medicinal note, a dunnage note, the mustiness. Yeah, um, I mean, if you're drinking this alongside of like an Isla single malt, that's obviously going to take over. That That's going to overshadow this. But standing on its own, yeah, it's been an enjoyable nose. 
Let's check out the nose on the Johnny Walker Blue Label. Okay, so we got light smoke and leather. Some grape, I mean like green grape. Wow, yeah, this nose is really nice. Um, and noses like this should be oily and thick and should have just a really viscous mouthfeel. There's pear. Um, maybe some like, um, not apple pie, but like baked, um, desserts that are filled with like fruits, so, like baked fruits inside with some spices, some candy fruits. But again, that peat is right there and oh, something that's reminiscent of like Craig Gallicky. I know there's no Craig Gallicky in this because Craig Gallicky is not a Diageo product. It's a doer's product, but yeah, it's got some like meatiness behind it. Maybe Mortlock? Maybe they use some Mortlock in this. Yeah, there's got to be some sherried malt in here too. But I think what's really jumping out at me right now is that I feel like I can peg some Talisker peat in this. I know I mentioned that they use Kalila, but get like a Talisker minerality off of it. Maybe that's what I was going, where I was going with the Craig Gallicky. It's a very like, Talisker note on the nose. Again, that raisin, that grape, dark fruit. Some tropicals mixed with um, that light smoke. Um, this is a phenomenal nose. If, if I'm, if I'm ABing these two noses here, I mean. Yeah, I mean. This comes off more simple. Um, doing a direct comparison, this comes off uh, much flatter. This this nose is alive. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a spoiler. I think the nose might be the best part of this whiskey. All right, let's get to the palate. So, the Adelphi blended stock on the palate. Sweet honey, graham cracker, peat smoke, some florals. Right now, um, some tobacco ash. Um, yeah. Ooh, I like that peat lick uh, on the back end of that palette. There's like a caramel, like sort of like creme brulee, brulee uh, note, almost like a flambéed um, caramel dessert. Hmm. Like a honey and... Um, like a almond sort of uh, vibe. Um, another sip here. Mm. Yeah, there's a coastal a coastalness to this. Um, certainly, you get the feeling that it's Isla Peak. Uh, it's not at its peak. It's not at its prime. Um, again, it's been blunted, but the peat is there. And the peat shows up even more in the finish right now that I'm experiencing um, than the front of the palette. It's just around the edges on the palette, and then it really shines in the finish. <clears throat> mm. There's a touch of bitterness, um, but um, I think it's an enjoyable sipping whiskey here. It's a little bit uncomplicated. It's certainly young. Um, I'm enjoying sipping this. That's a lot to be said for something that's under $30 Canadian before tax. Yeah. Yeah, I'd drink that. I'd drink that if offered. Um, the finish, again, just smoke whip, wisps, um, some peppering, some spice right now. Maybe... Um, yeah, some sort of like cigar parlor smoke. Um, impressive for, again, $30. Let's try out this Johnny Walker Blue label palette. Hmm. 
So something I've noticed having this whiskey many times in the past, having it now, it is a very slow build. The first 10 seconds on the palate chewing it there, um, honey, malt, um, some pepper, a tiny bit of peat, not a whole lot actually happening. And it feels a little thin at first. <clears throat> um, smooth? Sure, yeah, this can be the ultimate smooth expression, if you like. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, sweet icing sugar. Um, very, very light peat with that peppering. Um, yeah, some fruits, just orchard fruits, like um, overripe apples. Let's take another sip, and this time I'm going to take a longer chew because you really do need to take your time with this whiskey. Such a difference. Really, truly rich now. Um, yeah. Full bodied leather, like a room filled with like leather bound books, if I can uh, quote Ron Burgundy. Um, that peat really does seem to uh, correlate to Talisker peat for me. Um, a certain um, sort of uh, industrial note in there, too. Um, there's some, some sort of dunnage tones, too. A lot better with time. You really need to take your time with this whiskey when you're sipping it. Um, yeah, you, you better take your time with it or else you're gonna miss the whole thing. You're gonna miss the malt impact. I think the front end is the grain. And then as you chew, and as it goes on to 15, 20 seconds, that's that malt content and that old malt content taking over. Yeah. Um, it's not thick. It's not voluptuous. It's not oily like the nose seemed to promise me. Um, and so I'm disappointed there. I think, again, I think the nose might be the best part of Johnny Walker Blue Label. I've spent 45 minutes to an hour with the nose before because it is really good. Um, but the palate, you really need to nurse. Let's take another sip here. Talk about the finish. Yeah, a lot more heft. A lot weedier when uh, you take your time and really chew on it there. But again, it's it's thin. It's 40%. There's not much you can do with modern day 40% whiskeys um, to really save the body, it seems. Um, on the finish, peat smoke, um, some some biscuits, some like... Um, ooh. Yeah, there's malt lingering there. Smoke smoke uh, as wisps, um, faintest hints of fruit. Yeah, a fruit I can't, I can't quite name right now. Uh, I'm gonna quickly do just an A, B, side-by-side -side sip of each one, and we'll get to some scores and some final thoughts here. Yeah, there really is no replacement for time in the cask. You can try all you want to try and make up for that, but it is evident that this is younger than the Johnny Walker Blue. And if I had to say it, the Johnny Walker Blue does have a slightly thicker mouthfeel. But here's the real question here, um, as we're comparing these two. Is my enjoyment of the Johnny Walker Blue label that much greater, 12 to 14 times greater than that, which is in this Adelphi private stock? How could it be? It really is, it's the, the law of diminishing returns. And when we're talking about a bottle that's made to be a special occasion bottle, that's not really the point. However, I think there's a lot better whiskeys that you should be spending 300 to $400 on than Johnny Walker Blue Label. It's known, it has that cachet because of marketing, because it's been placed in front of our faces in magazines as that thing to aspire to for so long. Um, it doesn't stand up to that reputation, not, not in my books. 
and, and I think it really this this whiskey, this Adelphi private stock, has shone a light on the Johnny Walker Blue Label, kind of exposing it for what it is. A mass marketed luxury whiskey. It's still good. Believe me, it is good whiskey, but I don't think I'm gonna be paying that freight. And once more to that, I didn't pay that freight because I've been drinking miniatures of Johnny Walker Blue Label for quite a while, simply because I don't want to shell out the money to be able to have a full bottle. I'm okay with having a little bit every now and then. And when a buddy pulls it out, having it there, um, it's just not what I choose to spend my money on. So I should stop beating around the bush and I should start talking about scores. When it comes to the Johnny Walker Blue Label, again, it's a good whiskey. I would give it probably an 83 out of 100, which is a really great score for a blended scotch. Again, this isn't blended malt, this has grain in it. However, um, the value is just atrocious. It's awful value. Now, value isn't everything. As I mentioned earlier, it has its place, it has its time. Um, but as a policy, I will only take off a maximum of five marks off of a whiskey um, for poor value. And this is one of those times where I would take all five marks off for value. So if I'm scoring this whiskey, I'm moving that score from an 83 down to a 78 because again, I'm not gonna buy this whiskey because it's it just, it it's out of whack. Now, as for the Adelphi private stock, it's not as good as the Johnny Walk Blue Label. Mm. However, it's not bad. It's actually really enjoyable. I've enjoyed sipping on this whiskey. If I needed a well blended scotch whiskey, this might well be it. Um, I think I would give this a rating of just around, I'm gonna say 80 out of 100. And the reason why I say 80 is because it is priced appropriately for what it delivers. And I would say, yeah, it's probably a 75 plus a five point price jump for that uh, value. I mean, it's it's probably the cheapest scotch I can go buy. This is cheaper than Johnny Walker Red. And most people compare Johnny Walker Blue to its uh, its little brother, its little sibling, the Johnny Walker Green label. And that's that's been done to death. And I do believe that I enjoy the Johnny Walker Green more than the Johnny Walker Blue at this point. Um, this gives it a run for its money. Not a better whiskey, but a much better value proposition. You can get 12 to 14 bottles of this as opposed to the Johnny Walker Blue. 80 is essentially an entirely average score for me when it comes to whiskeys. Anything below 80 is subpar. Anything above 80 is, 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 is good, if not guilt verging on um, excellent, great, superb, unbelievable. Um, as we go up into the 90s. Yeah, this is a good value whiskey. Um, I've heard even, because this is a 2019 batch, that is getting even better. So I'd love to get a, a more recent batch bottling of this whiskey and then see what's going on. If you have an extra 30 bucks burning a hole in your pocket, why not give this a shot? I'm not gonna say the same for spending an extra $400 in Johnny Walker Blue. There's some amazing independent bottles out there. Um, that you can spend that money on. Like, I don't know, a 28-year-old Highland Park from Gordon McPhail. Thank you guys once again for tuning in and checking out this comparison of these two whiskeys. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of Johnny Walker Blue Label? Is it worth the money? Is it a whiskey that you have some special or fond memories attached to because it's been uh, a gifted whiskey? And have you had the Adelphi Private Stock Blended Scotch? Um, I hear some divisiveness on it, but let me know your thoughts. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you think it's a great well whiskey. Thank you once again for joining me. If you can go ahead, like, share. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It really helps. We're nearing 1,000 subscribers, which isn't just a mind boggling thing to say um, five or six months in. Unreal. You guys are the best. Thank you once again for joining me on Whiskey on the West Coast. Until next time, I'm going to take a sip of this Johnny Walker Blue Label and say, slange.